Okay, uh, let us consider a few problems here. The first problem here states, consider an FIR lattice filter with coefficients K1, K2, K3 given. Find its impulse response. Draw the equivalent DF1 structure. This problem is different from what has been done previously. The previous problems you were given direct form arrangement and asked to convert to lattice. Here you are provided with lattice and you are asked to change it to direct form. So it's a reverse of what you did previously. This also involves some equations. The equations to be applied are as follows. For m which starts from 1, 2, 3 till the last value m, please observe in the previous formula it was reverse. We started from m and went all the way down till 1. Now we have to consider am of 0 to be 1, am of m is equal to km. This is the formula written in reverse. am of i is equal to am minus 1 of i plus am of m into am of m minus 1, am minus 1 of m minus i with i value between 1 to m minus 1. So there is another set of equations and these set of equations have to be used to solve this particular problem. Let us begin now. Now in this problem we have identified that the value of m, we have identified that the value of m, the order happens to be equals to 3. Now how do you know that it is 3? This is because there were 3 stages, there were 3 stages in the lattice structure. They have mentioned k1, k2 and k3. Since there are three stages in the lattice structure, we conclude that the order here m should be equal to 3. Okay. Next, let us now start solving the each of the three cases. So in the first case, case 1, we consider m value equals to 1. Okay. Say, call it as case 1 the small m value we will take as 1. Therefore, in the formula given you can see am of 0 is equal to 1, am of m is equal to km. So, we will start doing the substitution here. a1 of 0 equals 1 and a1 of 1 is equal to k1. Okay, k1 is given theta 0.65. Okay, so we have found what is a1 of 1, okay, but this is not the end of the problem. Next, uh, within case 1, we have this equation given. The condition here uh, is we have to do it for a certain value of i and that i value is between 1 and m minus 1. Now, if you put m as 1, we get 1 minus 1 which is 0. That means that the last equation here is not applicable when the value of m is equal to 1. So, we don't go for the third equation here. Okay. So, let us proceed. We proceed to case number 2 and we have to consider the value of m to be equal to 2. Let us consider the case 2. In case 2, the m value is taken to be 2. Therefore, substituting, we get a2 of 0 equals 1. a2 of 2 is equal to k2. k2 is provided as a data minus 0 0.34. Then, the equation, third equation, a2 of i equals a1 of i plus a2 of 2 into a1 of 2 minus i. 
Now in this case, the value of i m minus 1 to have is 1. Okay, only one single value. Therefore, we can perform the substitution. Substituting the value of i is equal to 1 in the previous equation, we will get a2 of 1 equals a1 of 1 minus a2 of 2, a1 of 2 minus 1 is 1 and inserting the values, inserting the appropriate values, this is what we get and we conclude a2 of 1 is equal to 0 0.429 okay next we can move on to the case number 3 in case 3 we shall consider the m value m should be equal to 3 therefore the equations can be developed as a3 of 0 equals 1 a3 of 3 is equal to k3, k3 is given, it is equal to plus 0 0.8, a3 of i, third equation is a2 of i plus a3 of 3, a2 of 3 minus i the i value which are possible here are 1 and 2 because m is 3, m minus 1 will be 2. So we have to test it for two values. Okay. Now let us begin. First let us consider i is 1. The equation now becomes a3 of 1 is a2 of 1 plus a3 of 3, a2 of 2. So substitute all the values 0 0.429 plus 0 0.8 into minus 0 0.34. The answer we get A3 of 1 is 0 0.157. Next, when you substitute the I value which is equal to 2, the equation now becomes a3 of 2 equals a2, a2 of 2 plus a3 of 3 into a2 of 3 minus 2 is 1. Once again, substituting the appropriate values. and simplify, we get the answer as 0 0.0032, okay. So what do we observe now is, we already had a3 of 3, so it's a third order filter we are looking at. The coefficients of the third order filter are a3 of 1, this is the first coefficient, a3 of 2 and a3 of 3. So all three values we know, I, I think we, we have to stop, right. We have to finish this. Therefore, now let us arrange all these values we have in the system function. We know the general format of system function. H of Z equals first coefficient we'll have is A3 of 0, which is 1. Okay. Next comes A3 of 1 times Z inverse. Next, A3 of 2 Z power of minus 2, last is a3 of 3, z power of minus 3. This can be replaced with the numbers that we have calculated and the values are as shown. Okay. 
Okay, so system function is obtained. Now, once we know the system function, we can take the inverse transform. Taking the i z t of the above, taking the inverse transform of the above, H of n is delta of n plus 0 0.157 delta of n minus 1 sorry plus 0 0.0032 delta of n minus 2 plus 0 0.8 delta of n minus 3 okay so this is the system uh, impulse response. This was asked that you find the impulse response. Okay. Now we know the impulse response. Now looking at H of Z, we can write the direct form one way resolution. If you're not comfortable, you can convert it to a difference equation. You know the procedure. The procedure is replacement of H of Z by Y of Z by X of Z, cross multiply, right? and then take inverse the transform, you will get the difference equation. From the difference equation also you can write the structure. Anything is fine, either system function or difference equation. So here we shall write the DF1 realization that is directly from the system function we will do that. Okay. So here we can see the system function, right? So looking at the values we shall draw the structure. How the structure is drawn, we can see now. First, we start with the input end. The input end is x of n, correct? Now, depending on how many terms we have, z power of minus 1, z power of minus 2, z power of minus 3, that many number of delays we should have. So, z power of minus 1, first one. Next, we have z power of minus 1, second one. And next, we have z power of minus one third one right and here are the coefficients so what are the which is the first coefficient it is one which is the second coefficient it is 0 0.157 which is the third coefficient it is 0 0.0032 which is the fourth coefficient it is 0 0.8 then combine combine add okay we add these values the output is added here Next we add it here and all of that finally is the output called as y of n. So this is called as the df1 realization which we have arrived at from the lattice structure. Let us take a look at a few problems based on the windowing technique. The question here is a low pass filter is to be designed with the following desired frequency response. The frequency response is HD of e power of j omega, also denoted as HD of omega, equals e power of minus j2 omega when omega value is less than pi by 2. And it is 0 for omega between pi by 4 to pi. Determine the frequency coefficients HD of n and H of n if W of n is a rectangular window defined as follows. So they have given you the window function itself, w r of n is equal to 1, n lies between 0 to 4 and 0 otherwise. Also find the frequency response h of omega of the resulting FIR filter. Now from the problem, we have to collect some information. First thing, they are asking you to design a low pass filter. Even from the frequency response, we can tell it's a low pass filter because for omega value, which is between 0 to pi by 4, we are getting a response and from pi by 4 to pi it is 0. So initially we are getting a response then it is 0. So it is a low pass filter. Okay, And from this low pass filter we can check, we know the expression for ideal low pass filter z power of minus j alpha omega. We can conclude that the alpha value here is definitely 2. And the frequency mentioned here pi by 4 in both cases here, it refers to the cutoff frequency therefore omega c is equal to pi by 4. Okay. Further, the window size 
is 5 points because the index is from 0 to 4, total number of points n capital N is equal to 5. So let us start now in the solution. First we plot, we sketch the magnitude and phase response of the desired low pass IR filter. So the desired IR filter you know is the ideal one. So it is ideal behavior. The magnitude response looks like this. It is same as what we have studied in the past, but here we have to indicate the values. Means the gain is 1 between 0 to pi by 4 and from 0 to minus pi by 4 on the left side. So these two points are nothing but omega c and minus omega c. The phase plot similarly theta k is equal to angle of hd of omega. It has a linear slope and the slope is equal to minus 2 between minus pi by 4 and plus pi by 4. This is called as a phase response. Okay. Then we know for an ideal low pass filter hd of n is obtained by the inverse discrete time Fourier transform of hd of omega. So by definition we have 1 by 2 pi integration between minus pi to plus pi hd of omega e power of j omega n d omega. So this portion between minus pi to plus pi is the entire spectrum and we are aware that spectrum is periodic. Okay, so it's sufficient to take the range between minus pi to plus pi, correct? Now, from what is given in the problem, the given expression clearly states what is the value for hd of omega and the value is e power of minus j to omega which is only between minus pi pi to 4 to plus pi by 4. Therefore, in the expression we can make some modifications. The first thing we are substituting for hd of omega. Substitution is e power of minus j to omega. Then the limits are also between minus pi by 4 to plus pi 4 because this is the region where you get a value in the outside this the value is 0. So from pi by 4 to pi it is 0 so we cannot include that part. Now this expression okay e power of minus j to omega into e power of j omega n you know you can combine it okay. So if you combine it you will get the uh, you get the exponent okay. Now the simplification of this will take the form sin of omega c into n minus alpha divided by pi times n minus alpha. You could remember this as a result or if you want you can solve the integration also. The choice is yours. Okay, If you can memorize this particular formula, you can directly use it as a result of this integration. Therefore, we are aware the value of omega c is equal to <coughs> pi by 4. We know alpha is equal to 2. So yeah, alpha value we know is minus 2. So we are putting minus of alpha and uh, so the value we substitute here is 2. Okay, And in the denominator we have pi times n minus 2. Okay, The n value is not equal to 2. Okay. The same thing when n value is equal to 2 is given by hd of 2 for the specific point, for the single point n is equal to 2, therefore we are putting n is equal to 2 here, it becomes 1 by 2 pi, limits are same, the exponent you know, okay, the exponent what, what you get is the power becomes 0 because n and 2 both are same, so when you substitute the power becomes 0, therefore we have e power of 0 d omega which you integrate and you get the answer is 1 by 2 pi times pi by 2 and solving it we get the answer is 1 by 4. Alternatively you can remember it as a formula also. If you want the formula, the formula can be called as omega c divided by pi. So omega c is pi by 4. So pi by 4 by pi simplify you get 1 by 4. Okay. So this is also possible. You can, you can perform that. Alternatively, if you are comfortable performing the integration, we can integrate as well. So I will show you that method also, how do you perform the integration. So we had 1 by 2 times minus omega c to omega c 
e power of minus j omega alpha e power of j omega n d omega. Now you know that we can combine the exponent in this fashion e power of j omega into n minus alpha d omega n minus alpha d omega correct and the integration of an exponent is the same exponent integral is same exponent so we write the same exponent in the numerator in the denominator since integration is with respect to omega everything other than omega what is there other than omega j into n minus alpha is written in the denominator so this is the solution for the integral next we have to apply the limits omega c is the upper limit minus omega c is the lower limit okay so when you apply the limits so you are actually substituting for the value of omega so the substitution will result in 1 by 2 pi j times n minus alpha is a constant you can take it outside and then you apply the limits so you get e power of j omega c n minus alpha minus e power of minus j omega c n minus alpha now you can see here a pattern emerging it is in the form of e power of j theta minus e power of minus j theta so the extra thing we have to do is we have to multiply and divide by 2j and then you can call the quantity in the bracket as sin theta so theta here is omega c times n minus alpha so this is what we have and we have to divide it by okay so when you multiply by 2j 2 2 cancels what remains is 2 cancels j cancels what remains is pi times n minus alpha so this is how you can perform integration if you want you can solve the problem by simplifying and uh, computing the integration alternatively if you want to remember it as a formula you can remember it as a formula and and you can substitute the value of omega c and alpha here and you still get the same result so this is a couple of ways how you can do it okay so it's up to you which method you adapt next given in the problem the window function is a rectangular window wr of n is equal to 1 for n between 0 to 4 and it is 0 otherwise so we know very clearly that the size of the window is 5 points now to get h of n from hd of n we have to multiply it with the respective window therefore from whatever equations we got so we got a pair of equations one n not equal to alpha one n is equal to alpha therefore we write both these results and multiply it with the respective window function w r of n okay so we know w of r of n is defined like this its value is 1 so when n is not equals to alpha we know alpha is equal to 2 right so when it is not equal to alpha so we are considering n from 0 to 4 among that 0 1 3 4 is not equal to 2 obviously right so for that case we have the first equation that is sine of pi by 4 into n minus 2 divided by pi n minus 2 multiplied by the window function we know the expression is 1 and for the case when n is equal to alpha n is equal to 2 we, get, we got the answer is 1 by 4 so 1 by 4 is multiplied with the respective window function whose value is 1 so h of n is obtained okay now if we want actual values now we have to substitute n values 0 1 2 3 4 and we will get what is hd of n right so we know how to calculate hd of n okay hd of n there's an expression which we just saw so in that expression we can substitute and we can get the answer so once you know hd of n we know w r of n also okay just take the two terms multiply the answer is h of n okay so we have to take effort in calculating what is hd of n all right so this is the result okay this is the result we have computed the values for h of n this is one part of the answer okay now what you observe here is the values okay so this can be considered to be the midpoint among the five points two is the midpoint so you can see there is a symmetry here correct the values are symmetric similarly h of n is also symmetric so it's center symmetric this is important right for the case of linear phase this condition is important now since the value of n is 5 is an odd number the frequency response of the center symmetric fir filter is computed as follows so we stated that the formula for h of omega should be remembered now we have two cases one odd one even so this is the odd case so you will have one point separately corresponding to the midpoint right and we remember 
this particular formula e power of minus j omega times n minus 1 by 2 h of n minus 1 by 2 plus summation limits are between 0 to n minus 3 by 2 2 times h of n cos of omega n minus n minus 1 by 2. Now in this formula we substitute capital N as 5 and the formula will now slightly reduce as e power of minus j2 omega. Correct this is nothing but alpha. So it is alpha is same as n minus 1 by 2. So we substitute and got this. Then the midpoint is at 2. So h of 2 plus the limits becomes 0 to 1. 2 times h of n cos of omega n minus 2. Therefore, if you expand this summation, when you expand the summation, we know first substitution n is equal to 0, we get h of 0 cos 2 omega. The next substitution is 2 times h of 1 cos of omega. Okay. So, uh, students, if you have some problem doing substitution or something like that, once you know that the order is 5, okay, so the total number of terms we should have is 5, correct? So, one point is midpoint. Other than that, we have 2. But you know that we are using symmetry and what we are doing, we are taking the sum for 2 points and then multiply by 2 that becomes 4 points, correct? So, although 4 points are remaining, here we show only 2 because we have into 2, clear? So, suppose by chance you forget, if, if, if you are not able to get the answer, you forget. We can still write the expression, how we can write e power of minus, alpha, yeah, it's, it's e power of minus j omega alpha, okay, j alpha omega, whatever it is, okay. H of the midpoint for 5, the point which is midpoint is 2, right, the index 2 is the midpoint plus 2 times h of 0, correct, first point, h of 0, cos of 2 times of omega. The next point after h of 0 is 2 times h of 1, so 0 has become 1, cos of omega, got it? So this is how you can remember the pattern. If you can remember the pattern, already you had computed the coefficients h0, h1, h2, substitute the value and this becomes the expression for frequency response. Thank you all.